To lift something that heavy, you would have to have something relatively strong and reliable, like my upload frequency. Upload frequency. Upload frequency. Hello. It's been a while. But Freezy, it's been like... a month. It's not like I've been doing nothing. YouTube in its early stages can be pointless. It's like interning at a job except with crappy wages and you make nothing. We work for food and a place to sleep. No work means no food. No food means I die. So, do you want me to stop working? For the three people that said yes, here's a bottomless pit. Please form an orderly line and jump. On a serious note, I'm genuinely surprised at the amount of views and subs I've gotten thus far, so thank you, kind gentlemen. Now, down to the topic at hand, traits and how they can affect your gameplay. Personally, I like to take the most optimal traits rather than roleplay, but it's just nice to select random ones every once in a while to spice up your gameplay. I was in the process of going off and listing every trait when the developers decided to add these annoying achievement requirements in order to get more points to dump into your character creation menu. Cause let's be honest, if you aren't picking these starter options then your character isn't optimal to begin with, unless you go for a lab start with specific mutations or something like that. If you play very little of the game, then I have to explain how to unlock these optimizations. Experienced players can skip ahead to here if you've already unlocked them. They're all pretty self-explanatory, however for an unexperienced player it can get you some hours into the game learning all the mechanics and skills needed to unlock a few of them. If you're an unexperienced player, I suggest you make an overpowered character just to play the game for a little while before you actually play the game as it was intended, because learning every mechanic of the game is what separates most players. However, in the process of finding all these, I figured out you can just get all the achievements through the debug menu. So if you're an experienced player returning like I am, then I suggest you do all this like I did, instead of wasting my goddamn time, you stupid dead. To start off with, we have Sentinel. Easy enough, just kill a hundred monsters of any kind. Thank god it's Friday, just survive for one day. 28 days later, just survive for 7 days. A time for every purpose under heaven, just survive for 28 days. Note, you actually have to fall asleep for it to count each day to have passed for all three achievements. Oshitake, reach a fungal tower. The doctor is out, reach a hospital. The whisperer in darkness, reach amigo encampment. We need to go deeper, reach a mine. Lifestyles of the rich and fetid, reach a mansion. I'm nuclear, reach a nuclear power plant. Eureka, reach a transcoastal facility. Please note, they are not actually on the coast. Concrete Hell, reach an island prison. Top Gun, reach an aircraft carrier. What are they hiding? Enter a lab finale room. Please note that all labs are not the same. Yours may not have one. Zombie Army, reach a military base. What a LARP! Reach a bastion fort. I can see my house from here. Climb to the height of six floors. Reality is falling apart. Witness a portal storm. I didn't want to wait around for this one. Just play till you see this pop up on the screen. Now that we have all that unknown junk out of the way, traits. The good, the bad, and are they really bad? Taking just a glance at these, there are probably a few you would always pick when making a character. Well, I would anyways. I suppose everyone has their own opinion on it. But we will exclude these because they're mod specific to magiclism. With those gone, we'll move on to the next part of some of these. Specifically, if you take the lab or experiment start, you get access to these traits. They're actually mutations, however, they stay permanently with you in the game. That means, no matter how much purifier you take, any bad mutations will forever cripple you. But since those are specific, we'll include those as well. For your normal character, this is what you have to work with. Just from these, the keen eye or experienced player would probably pick these due to their useful and take these because they will never have to deal with their downsides. However, in standard play, you can normally only take 12 points of downsides and upsides respectively. That means if we add up the total for each side, we can see how much both would cost. As you can see, we're over the limit, so all we have to do is remove one of these things that costs 3 or 2 plus 1. And there we go, we could run this character. We just need to take one more bad trait to offset the cost of the good ones. I'm just going to pick this one here, and we're all set. You didn't come here to learn basic addition and subtraction, so let's move on to the nitty gritty, shall we? This will be a personal in-depth analysis from my point of view for how I think these traits should be ranked and everything about them. 
This is the trait that's selected. These, if there is any, are the canceling traits, which means you cannot take them in conjunction with it. If the trait has ugliness, it will be displayed here. What the trait actually does is displayed down here, even more than what you can read from the standard description of a trait. If the trait falls within specific mutation categories, they will be displayed here. And with that out of the way, let's begin. There's just one more thing. Remember how I said, they're actually mutations. However, they stay permanently with you in the game. That means, no matter how much purifier you take, any bad mutations will forever cripple you. Well, that only applies to specific traits. Going to this one and simplifying it. Specifically, if you take the slow healer trait, you can mutate out of it by going down any of the counter mutation routes. However, if you take anything worse than that, then it's impossible to rid yourself of it, meaning you have permanent permanently locked yourself out of those mutation categories, and permanently must suffer with these bad traits, for which there are a few you can't mutate out of, to which I'll add this indicator here if it's impossible to rid yourself of it. And I'll also add this indicator here if it happens to fall under the lab or experiment start, since those are fairly exclusive. Accomplished Sleeper. As this trait just makes you sleep easier with less time spent awake, I don't find it particularly useful. Addiction Resistant. This can help to mitigate your drug stockpile if you tend to rely on them a lot, but I'd imagine a normal player would very rarely use them to begin with, so I'd pass this up unless you had alcohol metabolism or an ethanol burner. Alcohol Metabolism. As this mutation gives you the Saprovore mutation for free, it can be a good pick for late game, as you can consume spoiled foods without getting food poisoning, but it really depends on if you plan to decide on playing your character for that long. If you end up discarding spoiled or rotten food due to bad mood anyways, then I'd pass this up. Animal Empathy. Increases morale of animals to some degree, making some non-hostile from the get-go, and some that flee are just neutral to you. Not entirely useful, so I'd pass this up. Canine Ears. At the cost of one ugliness if uncovered. Honestly not a bad pick. It's the equivalent to feline ears plus good hearing combined, with the trade-off of a few NPC interaction modifiers for one extra point, but that only applies to if it's uncovered, which you'll most likely have headgear on anyways. Cannibal. If you remember that you actually took this trait, it can be really good to increase your mood, and tons of good mood if you happen to take one of the pairing traits, and opens up another form of food to stockpile, though I tend to forget I took this trait half the time. Cold Tolerance. I don't find this particularly useful. If you're in cold temperatures anyways, then chances are it's so crippling that you can't be in it for long. But it can give some flexibility in being able to spend a little extra time when the temperature starts dropping for the winter. Deft. If you plan to do a lot of melee combat, then this is pretty useful. Just keep in mind that you do tend to be a little more vulnerable since you consume extra stamina at the same time to recover from missing attacks to have a chance at attacking again with less moves. So backing off more than usual and picking your fights more carefully is highly suggested. Disease Resistant. Unless you plan to be drinking out of random puddles of water or don't want to deal with the random cold or flu that affects you, then I'd pass this up. It's just not entirely worth it unless you plan on further mutating it into Disease Immune or take Poison Resistant in case you digest some nasty gunk. Electro Receptors. The description I quote will seriously mess you up if you happen to be shocked. I haven't been able to confirm that with testing. This really only lets you sense where robot type monsters are in the dark, as shocker zombies will typically be lit up in the dark anyways, so it can be useful in labs or spotting random riot control platforms in the dark. Epicuticle. Not too bad, it's like a more protective clothes liner. Provides a bit of everything from defense to temperature control as well as wetness protection. Fangs. For a chance at dealing extra damage if the mouth is uncovered, it can be tempting to take. Fast Healer. This can be a good trait, leaving as little downtime as possible when injured. I will sometimes pass this up since the normal healing rate is pretty balanced and fine, but if you tend to hate staying in bed for a long time, as you have to when recovering, then you can take this. Fast Learner. For how little this trait does practically, I'd pass this up. It's just not really worth it unless you take Savant or Illiterate, but if you took those, then you'd like to suffer anyways. Fast Reader. Taking this is just a wasted point. You read faster with time you're going to burn at the safety of your base anyways. Just pass this one up. Fast Reflexes. If you plan for melee combat, then I'd take this. With a little extra dodge, the RNG can be pretty helpful. 
feline ears. I wouldn't take this unless you plan to go down the feline mutation route. It just doesn't provide enough benefit for the cost of a one point. Fey Eyes, not entirely useful unless you plan on playing with interacting with NPCs in mind, as it just changes NPC interact modifiers, but it can lead to Alpha Night Vision if you plan on getting it. Fleet Footed, an increased movement speed bonus is always welcome, and is good on pretty much every character you play. Fluffy Tail, adds some dodge, limits some of your clothing options, and though not written in the description, modifies some of your NPC dialogue interaction modifiers. Good Hearing, with my previous gripe with feline ears, it just doesn't provide enough benefit to justify it costing a single point. Unless you plan to go down a mutation route or just want good hearing, i pass this up. Good memory. If you tend to micromanage your skill rusting to some degree because you get bored, then you can take this, but most people don't. I don't. I just find it a wasted point. Gourmand. With a larger stomach, morale nullifiers and bonuses, and faster consumption speed, this is an absolute beast of a trait if you decide to take it, with high metabolism and high thirst. Heat tolerance. Compared to cold tolerance, this is quite better to some degree. You can sit next to fires for quite a bit without getting sweaty, and tolerate more when the season starts to change into summer, letting you get some more time in before needing to remove layers of clothes. Indefatigable. Whoa, dude. Try saying that ten times fast. The extra stamina regeneration can be very worth to take. I usually take this trait frequently. Infection resistant. If you tend to have bad luck like me and don't find antibiotics, or when you use a hot object on a deep wound, this can help. Pretty much summed up, you're a little less than twice as likely to recover from deep wounds, and around three times as likely to recover from infections with this trait. Killer Drive. As this is a prerequisite to Psychopath, you also get the same trait bonuses when tied to good cannibal mood, with a slight NPC interaction modifier, but with a downside of potentially bad mood, as you may or may not be killing stuff frequently with downtime at your base, then Psychopath may seem like the more positive trait depending on how often you're out and about. Less sleep. Needing to sleep less is actually really bad. It may seem good, but not being able to sleep as frequently means you have a harder time healing if you need to sleep for extended periods of time. i pass this one up. Light Bones. With a faster attack and move speed, along with weight reduction, I find this one tempting. Then I'm reminded I would take way more bash damage than I normally would. I tend to pass this up, but you can if it fits your playstyle. Light Eater. Needing to eat less can be somewhat annoying at times, actually with random food you find, plus the countering trait of high metabolism and its increased stamina regeneration basically makes this a trait nobody should take, I'd pass this one up if possible. Light Step Unless you plan to take weak scent as well, as both work together well that encourages sneaking around at night. However, you can take this if you tend to be more accident prone with traps. I've found myself in quite a pickle when stepping on a landmine in the dark. Perhaps you have better luck than I do. Who is to say? Long fingernails. I really wouldn't take this as the hand encumberment when covered is really problematic. I would highly recommend passing this one up. Masochist. Good mood when under pain. It seems like a good trait, but in reality doesn't end up being practical as you tend to forget you have this option. Plus, you still end up suffering from the actual side effects from pain. It just doesn't put you in a bad mood anymore. Night Vision. Increasing your dark vision range is really good as you can skirt around enemies before they have a chance at getting close and remain hostile while in the dark. I usually take this trait if I plan to do a lot of nighttime scavenging. It's really up to you and your playstyle if you really want to do that or not. Optimist. For free good mood, this can often be a good pick with really little downside other than it costing 2 points. That's really up to you if you decide to take this. I do on some occasions. Pack Mule. Really useless to be honest. It used to give increased volume storage, but with the inventory storage rework, they really killed the usefulness of this trait. I'd pass it up as you're in relative safely when moving around items anyways. Padded Feet. Unless you tend to step into pools of acid pretty frequently, or have a gearless start, then I'd pass this up due to it being useless once you get some fitting footwear. Pain resistant. With reduction of pain, this can help save your skin if you make a bad move. So pain stat penalties aren't as bad. It's pretty decent, and I tend to take this trait on some occasions. Feloderm. Though ever so worse defense-wise than epicuticle, your normal thirst needed is reduced. 
It's made from wood and plant matter, so if you ever caught fire without water nearby, chances are you'd have a bad time. It's up to you if you'd rather have the thirst reduction rather than a higher defense and smaller fire vulnerability. Photo 4. You've got a thing on your head that acts as a light. It can light up the tile you're on and one tile around you in a 3x3 area. However, it could be a problem with a little head encumberment. Poison resistant. This can be useful as it kicks out the effects of poison faster. This is most useful when you have to walk through toxic smoke clouds. And since you'll be poisoned usually in combat and probably won't have other means to neutralize it, it can save you a few hit points or keep you off the edge of death when badly poisoned. Pretty. Not much to say. Negative 2 to ugliness, which is good to certain NPCs. Psychopath. A slight NPC interaction modifier can be useful even if you don't take the cannibal trait, but gives a bonus if you do, along with no bad mood from certain sources. Generally a good trait, take it if you want, I do on some occasions. Quick. A flat speed increase is an absolute boon, take this if you can spare the points. Radiogenic. You heal when irradiated unless you have one of the other radioactive traits. It also dissipates absorbed rads faster. Robust genetics. This increases the rate at which you recover to eventually start mutating safely for better traits at 24 times the normal rate. If you're interested in learning more into how it works, I'll leave the appropriate document in the description, though it's rather complicated so a fair warning. Slimy. Prevents a lot of the downside when melee fighting acidic creatures, along with decreased wet penalties. But the ugliness you get from it can be problematic if you decide on interacting with NPCs. Spines. I probably wouldn't take this as you pretty much need to take damage in order to deal damage, but it doesn't block or prevent anything, so in a desperate pinch it can help to some degree. Spiritual. With a slight NPC interaction modifier and good mood from religious things, unless you take it in conjunction with Cannibal, if you don't take Psychopath, then I'd probably pass this up, as the benefits don't really outweigh the cost of a single point. Strict Humanitarian. I don't really find myself using this trait at all, even if I make it my main goal of a character to try and use it, as the consumables that work towards this are fairly obscure, so I'd pass this one up. Strong Back. I don't end up taking this one as often as I used to with the change in inventory storage. You usually end up running out of storage room more often than not, but does have some usefulness in melee combat, and keeping weight from throwing you off balance if you forget to take off your backpack. Strong Stomach. I don't usually take this, but if I did, I would probably take Disease Resistant and Poison Resistant to keep down dirty water I would drink out of random pools. Other than that, I would definitely pass this up. Stylish. This has a very specific usefulness when staying at your base, as you can just put on fancy clothes and forget about it. Just don't forget to swap out your combat gear when you leave. I'd take this way more than Optimist, as the mood it gives can be higher, just with a little extra hassle. It's really up to you if you would like to manage that or not. Substance Tolerance. I would only really take this with either alcohol metabolism or a profession that gives an ethanol burner bionic, but I would preferably take both in that case. Sweet Tooth. With how long junk food generally takes to spoil, I would be tempted to take this for a bit of extra mood. Just keep in mind, all that stuff generally isn't healthy on your body in the long run. Terrifying. This pretty much gives you animal discord, which is typically a good thing as you'll want to kill lots of animals to stockpile food anyways. But if you want to avoid that, then I'd pass this up. Also gives a small NPC interaction modifier. Tough. With a slight NPC interaction modifier and extra hit points, this is usually good in general, as you can just take more of a beating before needing to sleep it off. I find myself taking this pretty frequently. Tough Feet. A slight downgrade to padded feet, but becomes rather pointless until you get some fitting footwear. It's really up to you on if this is even worth it to you or not. Ursine Vision. With a larger night vision range to the standard mutation, it's fairly good for creeping around in the dark. However, in the light or daytime, you suffer from short-sighted penalties, just keep that in mind. I usually pass this one up due to the vision penalties. Weak Photo 4 acts as a weaker variant with just emitting enough light for what you're doing, and a little more head encumberment if covered. It can be nice to take this if you like doing a lot of crafting in the dark, but kind of useless once you find a permanent light source. Weak Scent, really only useful if you plan to be creeping around in the dark, 
as you can shake off scent tracking monsters easier. Rather pointless to fight one type of thing that can find you, and end up making noise so another thing can find you. So if you plan to be sneaking around in the dark, then I highly suggest taking Light Step as well. Webwalker. I don't find this particularly useful unless you have a hard time maneuvering around spider nests. In that case, I'd pass this up. And no, this trait does not let you sleep in webs without being post-spider threshold. Whiskers. For a small bit of dodge when the mouth is uncovered, I'd probably pass this up. It's just not worth a single point unless you plan on mutating into a specific category anyways. Addictive personality. Unless you take something that relies on substances, I would suggest taking this as you'll most likely be taking them infrequently anyways. Albino. I would seriously stay away from this. The only way to truly mitigate this one early game is to carry an umbrella with sunglasses. Or only travel at night. That is, till you find and wear clothing with 100% coverage on each body part. It's a huge pain to deal with early game, so I'd pass this one up if you don't want to struggle with it. Animal Discord. Makes most animals hostile towards you. It can be a boon since you'll want to be fighting them for their meat anyways. Take this if you're not skittish towards combat. Asthmatic. With how inhalers work and the NPC interaction modifier, it can be tempting to take, but it can be hard to maintain since you'll always have to be traveling for more inhalers just to keep yourself alive. Bad Back. For how bad this one seems, it can be alright to take since you probably can't carry everything with the current volume of storage you have on you anyways. It's up to you if it seems manageable or not. Bad Knees. This can be really bad since obstacles and uneven terrain is very frequently used to juke around while fighting. One misstep can lead you into some trouble, so I'd pass this one up if possible. Bad Temper. Not entirely unmanageable. If you don't tend to have bad mood anyways, then you might as well take this for a free point. Brawler. To me, this is an absolute no. Ranged weapons are so important. I know a lot of people take joy in trying to melee everything. I tend to keep my ammo and ranged weapons for stronger enemies. So without a doubt, I highly suggest passing this one up. Carnivore. Things that modify my diet always annoy me. It's really up to you if you want to deal with it. Passing up a food source is always hard to me. So I'd give this one a hard pass. Chemical Imbalance. Welcome to the Wheel of Randomness. This one can be annoying to deal with due to the randomness of effects. I don't ever take this. Clumsy. You make lots of noise and pretty much set off every trap you trigger. Hopefully you have high perception for being able to see that landmine before you step on it. Death. To be honest, I've only taken this trait once, and absolutely hated it. Not due to being able to hear, but my actual hearing. I like the random bits of sound and the background music. Give it a try and see if you find it manageable. Farsighted. This honestly just sucks. I wouldn't take this because it basically prevents wearing a power armor helmets without contact lenses. Fast Metabolism. Ah yes, this trait is actually good, since it provides stamina regeneration. I always take this in tandem with High Thirst and Gourmand to offset it, but everyone has their own play style. It may not fit you. Feathered Arms. With a heavy encumberment to your arms if covered, along with good wet protection. Good luck trying to melee combat without missing if you have anything covering your arms. Flimsy. With a decent reduction of maximum hit points and a minor NPC interaction modifier, this is somewhat manageable, but not impossible. Most people should avoid this trait, however if you're experienced then give it a try. Forgetful. A tempting trait to take if you are good at managing your skill rust, along with a minor NPC interaction modifier. Fragile. With a severe reduction of maximum hit points and a minor NPC interaction modifier, welcome to Hardcore Mode. Make sure to take Imperceptive Healer or Irreparable for a real-world experience, along with getting one shot constantly. Frail. With a reduction of maximum hit points and a minor NPC interaction modifier, this can make the game rather challenging but not impossible. Use all of your game knowledge to your advantage to avoid dying. Fructose intolerance. Things that modify my diet always annoy me. It's really up to you if you want to deal with it. I wouldn't take it. Genetic chaos. You will mutate a couple of times a day. With how bad some mutations can get, your game will eventually get to the point where playing isn't fun, as it becomes seriously hard to deal with eventually due to how mutating works. Genetic Downward Spiral, the even worse version of Genetic Chaos. You will mutate a couple of times a day, and all mutations you receive will be neutral or bad, never good. Genetically Unstable, you will mutate every so often. This can be really bad as you will slowly start getting really bad mutations that will mess up your game after some time. Good luck. Glass Jaw, with a decent reduction on maximum hit points to your head only, along with a minor NPC interaction modifier, it can be tempting to take, but makes the game more challenging if you decide to take another hit point reducing trait. 
grain intolerance. Things that modify my diet always annoy me. It's really up to you if you want to deal with it. I wouldn't take it. Hates vegetables. Things that modify my diet always annoy me. It's really up to you if you want to deal with it. I wouldn't take it. Heavy sleeper. In order for you to have disturbed sleep, specifically from sound, it needs to be way, way louder than what would normally take to wake you up. This can actually be good in some cases. I take this rather frequently. Herbivore. Things that modify my diet always annoy me. It's really up to you if you want to deal with it. Passing up a food source is always hard to me, so I'd give this a hard pass. High thirst. You get thirsty pretty quickly. I find this easy to offset due to water being everywhere, and having to take a minute to purify it if you didn't happen to have any on hand. I take this rather frequently. Hoarder. Like bad temper, but worse, be prepared for a basically permanent negative 70 bad mood. Illiterate. Oh hell no, I would never think of taking this. Having the ability to gain skill levels from books is too valuable of a trade-off. Though one could argue you could get all the levels you need from normal playing. To which I say, no, I like my computers too. Imperceptive Healer. Guess you hate yourself if you decide to take this. Be prepared to stay in bed for a super long time. You'll probably die due to hunger or thirst before you even notice you've recovered at all. Inattentive. If you don't tend to look at creatures to see their intent, then you can take this trait. However, for me, I tend to sneak around just enough to take this trait, as it would be too severe in avoiding damage for me. Insomniac. As this trait just makes you have a harder time falling asleep, with more time spent awake, I sometimes find it particularly useful. I end up taking this trait frequently. Irreparable. Welcome to hell. Your wounds will never naturally heal. Good luck if you decide to take this trait that basically makes the game unplayable. Jittery. When fairly hungry or hopped up on stimulants, you'll get the shakes. It's not unmanageable, but be wary of when it can trigger. I'll sometimes take this trait if I don't plan on using stimulants for my whole run. Junk food intolerance. Things that modify my diet always annoy me. It's really up to you if you want to deal with it. I wouldn't take it, especially since lots of stuff classified as junk food typically have a long spoil time. Caleptic Psychosis. Do you like seeing hallucinations? Well, you'll definitely be seeing a lot with this trait, along with a bunch of other random nasty effects if not medicated. I really hate this trait, because even if not medicated, you still have a chance of getting the shakes randomly. I'd never take this trait. Also, fun fact, this used to be called Schizophrenic, though due to it not being accurate enough, they renamed it. It's Greek, which roughly translates to of the apocalypse, psychosis. Lactose intolerance. Things that modify my diet always annoy me. It's really up to you if you want to deal with it. I wouldn't take it. Plus, dairy products usually take a long time to spoil if preserved. And also, you can domesticate cows to help with long-term food, which ends up being way too much of a deal breaker to me. Languorous. The lower stamina recovery is just way too hard to have when needing to run around, let alone melee attack targets. Be careful if you do actually decide to take this. I only suggest this for experienced players. Everyone else should avoid this. Light sensitive. With stat reductions while outside in the daytime, I hope you've built your character to only work in the dark. You might as well take Albino if you decide to take this as well, since daytime will be practically off limits to you anyways. Meat intolerance. Things that modify my diet always annoy me. It's really up to you if you want to deal with it. I wouldn't take it. Minor radioactivity. Say goodbye to bases since it will become a radioactive pit in a few days anyways. That is, until you find a suit of power armor. And that is, if you haven't mutated and can't fit into one anymore. Also, fun fact, while researching this, the devs left a little footnote in the code for irradiated cars, so this trait will become even more annoying to take if they decide to eventually add it. Mood swings. Don't you just hate when you randomly stop crafting? Well, this trait is for you, because when this baby hits a negative 100, you will. Narcoleptic. Pray that you don't fall asleep right next to a horde of monsters. This trait is an absolute game ender if it triggers at the wrong time. Do yourself a favor and don't take this. Nearsighted. This honestly just sucks. I wouldn't take this because it basically prevents wearing of power armor helmets without contact lenses. Nomad. Quite a nuisance if not maintained. However, it can be managed if you have multiple bases. I will occasionally take this trait. It's not the end of the world if you're always moving around anyways. Nyctophobia. With a small chance to get shakes, losing stamina, and only being able to run in the dark, this trait is only for characters that love the daytime, as being in the dark or nighttime would be quite the hassle. I'd pass this one up if possible, but it's not unmanageable. Pacifist. 
With an NPC interaction modifier and half as fast combat skill leveling, this has a chance of getting you killed pretty quick early game, however not unmanageable. I'd only suggest experienced players take this, however I usually pass it up so I can level my dodge early. Pain sensitive. This can be crippling if you aren't careful, but if you never get injured anyways then you never really have a problem. Take this if you feel comfortable with the game. I take it rather frequently. Ponderous. Absolutely awful as speed is important. I would take the negative 25% hit points from Flimsy before I take this. Don't take this unless you plan to utilize every environmental trick you can. Poor healer. Not unmanageable, but still really bad. You will need to stay in bed for an extra couple weeks before recovering from injuries. Poor hearing. I find myself occasionally taking this trait, as most things that will instantly kill you are usually loud. Like a building collapsing or a gunshot. It's really up to you and your playstyle. Pyromaniac. I'm not sure if there was an older version of this trait, but I recall it randomly starting fires if you haven't for several hours. It doesn't seem to be the case anymore with just a capped negative mood effect. This is more good than bad due to the on cue good mood from fires. I take this pretty frequently now knowing it doesn't start fires anymore. Rigid Table Manners. This one is a newer trait to me, but now that I know what it is, I'll always take it. It's basically a free point for little potential bad mood every once in a while. And eating isn't particularly an issue as you will usually be doing that in relative safety. Savant. For super long playthroughs with enough time, this can actually be beneficial due to the halved focus strain provided you don't mind the grind through skill levels, though I don't ever take it. Slit Nostrils. I would definitely pass this one up as Mouth Encumberment reduces Stamina Regeneration. I would absolutely never take this. Slow Footed. Absolutely awful as speed is important. I would take the negative 25% hit point reduction from Flimsy before I take this. Don't take this unless you plan to utilize every environmental trick you can. Slow Healer. If you don't want to be permanently locked into bad healing, then you can take this. It's not unmanageable, but you will still spend some extra time recovering from injuries. Slow learner. The reduced learning speed honestly isn't that bad. If I knew it was this little, I would have been taking this trait more. Not a bad choice to take. Slow reader. Basically a freebie given you will be reading books in the comfort and safety of your base anyways. I almost always take this trait. Squeamish. Given that most people don't usually wear filthy gear straight off of a zombie, unless you had taken a scenario that starts you off with no gear, the chance of this even being a problem is usually close to zero. Take this trait if your start doesn't rely on getting gear early. Stiff Knees As with my gripe with bad knees, this can be really bad since obstacles and uneven terrain is very frequently used to juke around while fighting. One misstep can lead you into death instead of just regular trouble, so I'd take a hard pass on this one. Strong Scent. If you don't really plan to be creeping around, then go ahead and take this. I rarely do, so that's really up to you. Sunlight Dependent. For how many points this gives, it honestly could be way worse of a trait. In fact, you can take Quick or Fleet Footed to offset the move speed, then when you're in sunlight, you will be faster. But it's up to you if you decide this is worth the points you want to burn towards your total points spent or not. Tentacle Arms. I could make a joke, but I'm not. Or am I? For the 30 hand encumberment for multi unarmed melee attacks, along with one dex and wet protection, I'm not entirely sure if this is worth it. Truth Teller. With a huge NPC interaction modifier, if you don't plan on interacting with NPCs anyways, then I'd take this as a freebie. Ugly. Adds ugliness to the whole body that can't be covered. If you don't plan on interacting with NPCs anyways, then I'd take this as a freebie. Weak Stomach. If you don't plan on getting nausea or purposefully drink from random puddles of water, then this can be an okay trait to take. I do on some occasions when I don't plan on utilizing alcohol. Weight extra small. This can be brutally hard to deal with, but has no permanent effect in your gameplay, if you manage the bad initial start for long enough. Weight extra 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 large. This can be brutally hard to deal with, but has no permanent effect in your gameplay, if you manage the bad initial start for long enough. 
wool allergy. I often don't even end up wearing anything made out of wool, so this is a freebie to me. But this will be pretty bad if you took it with the brave new world starting scenario. It's really up to you for how often you end up wearing clothes made out of wool. Beak. Since it has a chance of attacking on its own, it can be a good starting boon if you need a melee, but ends up being absolutely crippling later as you can't wear anything over the mouth. Growling Voice. Gives some pretty impactful NPC interaction modifiers. Can be beneficial if you prefer to intimidate rather than other things a lot. Heat Dependent. This is a rather gimmick trait, since it's beneficial in the long run, but in the short term for speed can be rather annoying. I almost never take this. Hooves. For a free starting trait, this can actually be beneficial depending on which start you take. It can deal a good bit of damage, but only you can decide if it's worth to take or not. Leg Tentacles. The downsides and upsides make it a pretty decent trade-off. The Silent Walk can compensate for the lack of move speed but only you can decide if it's worth it or not. Long Tail. For a bit of dodge to deal with some minor clothing restrictions, I never find this worth it, but it can be to you if you need it. Toe Talons. These can do a bit more damage compared to hooves. You can also take tough feet or padded feet to compensate for the move speed reduction for the damage it deals. This can be beneficial depending on which start you take. Webbed Hands. The upsides versus the downsides you get from this aren't beneficial enough for me to suggest taking this trait. I would pass this up if possible. If you don't know how the swimming mechanic works in the first place, then I'll leave a wiki post from someone who showed the formula on how it calculates the swimming mechanic in the description below. Well, that's all the traits you can pick from when starting a character. Hopefully you learned something new from it, as it took me a long time into delving into the code and finding out how all of them worked, with all the really small details to them too. I really appreciate everyone who has subbed to me thus far. I can't express it enough. It has given me the motivation to keep making more videos. Keep a lookout for the next one to which all of you have voted for. Though, this form of video does take a long time to make, since there really isn't a whole lot of information on this game out there to begin with. Which is what originally started me on this form of content, to make it easier to discover and find. I'll see all of you again in the next time when I cover all the common stereotypes of players. So, somehow I managed to get sick again while editing this, I'm sure you can tell by my voice and tone, but that'll give me more time to work on the next video. I also like to point out that this gentleman here also did his own two trait videos, but as they're old, and not very in-depth, along with no mention of achievements, that makes our videos very different. Well, thanks for watching.